Hello and welcome to this video. My name is Sam and I will be your instructor, you could say, for today. Um, let's get started. So in this mini course, we are going to be learning how to make a mermaid digital invitation. So this is great for anyone out there that is wanting to specialize and customize their digital invitation that they're going to send out to their friends and family. So if you don't know what a digital invitation is, it is an invitation that you do on the computer and you will send out by email or you would create a Facebook event page. Um, but you can also, once you have finished designing your invitation, you can also upload it onto a USB stick and take it to a printing shop and get them printed out so you actually hand deliver your invitations or you can print them at home on photo paper or any type of glossy paper so the choice is yours so let's get started so the software we're going to be using is a software called pickmonkey.com for those of you that don't know what pickmonkey is it is an online photo editing software and it is a great software for those of you that are wanting to learn how to make your own designs and that well, without having to have the whole degree of learning how to use Photoshop. So this is definitely a great way um, to make your own printables and, uh, sorry, not print, well, yeah, you can make the printables on there, but also your invitations, all right. So you need to go to www.pickmonkey.com I will also link the um, site down below the video so once you go here you will then just sign up to Pickmonkey and I do believe they have different types of um, memberships and that so you would just pick whichever one you feel is comfortable for you and once you have logged in you will come to this screen here and so you can go ahead and familiarize yourself with um, all the different uh, buttons and that, but I'm just going to go straight in. So we're going to hit design and then we're going to go blank canvas. Now they do have templates that you can use or you can customize your size. But because we're just going to do a standard 5 by 7 invitation, I'm just going to hit blank canvas. Okay, now we're going to go to print size and I'm going to go by 5 by 7 and I am going to hit blank at the bottom under popular tag, hit blank. And there has, that has brought up our blank invitations five by seven and seven by five. And at the top here you can see what you have entered in. You can always change the categories to anything else that you are wanting to find. Um, but there are heaps and heaps of them out there, but I won't go through that today. I'm just gonna do a standard five by seven. The reason why I'm going by standard standard five by seven is that it's always good to have a more larger invitation because you can always reduce the size um, as opposed to having a smaller design and reducing it larger then you know that your graphic might be pixelated. So it's always good to start off large and then reduce it that way. So we're going to do a portrait size. All we need to do is hit open and we are brought in ourselves into Pigmonkey editing software. Okay, so this is your main editing side where it has all the different features. So if you actually hover over it, it will tell you exactly which features are in there. So you have your effects, your top up, your text, your overlays, frames, textures, themes, and templates. And there are plenty of different um, editing or add-on templates etc on in each little tab okay so we're just going to hit apply because we're going to keep it as a blank canvas so first thing we're going to do is we're going to import our graphics and our digital paper so we're wanting a background and i was after something like a blue almost like watery color so i thought maybe it's like a chevron type of design will look quite good so in order to import your own designs, all you need or your own clip art, you just click onto overlays and you hit add your own. And then you go into my computer. Alright, and I'm going to hit, I have actually already got all the graphic that I am wanting to use. It's all in here already. 
all right so all the graphics that I have and all the clip arts I will link down below this video also to show you exactly where I get all my clip arts from okay so you double click onto whatever design you want and I am just going to move it up and I'm going to enlarge it so it fits the side of the paper now I don't want to go all the way to the end because it actually makes it too big so I want to keep it a nice small chevron color but obviously we have this blank area here so all I need to do is right click and duplicate layer and then I am then just going to match it up by going yeah and make each of it all matches up and delete and there we go so you've got your masked chevron pattern now okay the next thing I am going to do is to bring in my clip art so I want to bring in my mermaid here she is there the reason why I want to bring her in is because I want to be using her colors in the actual design process so everything kind of matches okay so we're going to stay in overlays and we're going to scroll all the way down until you reach labels and we click on to labels and I'm going to be using this fancy frame over here and we're going to click on to the circle that's just above the actual design and that actually rotates it and we're just going to rotate it by clicking on the mouse and then hitting release I'm not hitting release but we just release the, the mouse and let's make it bigger now I can see that that's obviously not straight so let's just make sure it's straight and let's enlarge it by dragging the mouse upwards or downwards you don't have to hit shift or anything you just drag your mouse by clicking onto the circles on either side of the design and that will actually enlarge it so let's just keep going until we are happy with our size all right i am fairly happy with that okay and when you're happy with that you can then click off it now you can see that our little moment is behind there on the left hand side here you have your layer layers um, a menu all i need to do is to click on to your um frame and we're going to drag it underneath and then voila your little mermaid is now on top okay but i'm still wanting to change the colors of this frame i'm not happy with it and what i like about pick monkey is that it's got a little dropper tool and that little dropper dropper tool can actually take any color that's in your design so for instance if you're bringing in a clip art which we already have over here you can then customize it to those colors which is a fantastic feature that's what i love about pigmenty that you can do all of these awesome techniques and that and it doesn't have to be so difficult all right so now we want to customize this color to match the rest and then our overlays tab will come up on the right hand side so anything that you click on that's to do with pig monkey it will bring up a little box on the side most of the time i think all the time in fact so we are wanting to change the black to a white color and i'm wanting to change the second color taking my dropper tool which is this tool here and i am wanting to change it to a nice purple color and there we go it's already looking very cute all right okay so now once we have got all of that we now need to start doing our design so what i would like to do is if we just click onto that it will then bring it up back up to the front okay i'm now going to bring in a few more other clip arts so i'm going to hit add your own and i want to bring in our little tiara and there it is and i want to make it a lot smaller and let's make it a little bit bigger Add more bigger, looks like. Okay, I just thought to do something different by having a little PR on top. Now what you can do is if you are not liking the arches behind there, 
All you need to do is just move that out of the way, click onto your frame, and then your overlay box will pop up. You click onto erase. Let's make it slightly bigger, like so. And then you put this there and you just delete all of that. Just bear in mind that you don't obviously delete. Now let's start bringing in our fonts. So on the left hand side here, if you click onto the T sign, that is where your fonts and your text are. Now you'll probably find that when you actually log in, you will have all of your all of the fonts down below here. And over here is ours, which means that is all PicMonkey's fonts that they have uploaded. And PicMonkey has a lot of fonts and every single week or every month they're adding new fonts to it so you can see how many new fonts they have added and how many fonts they've got like there's plenty there so i am also a big you could say fan of fonts so i like to purchase quite a few of my fonts and if you hit yours that will bring up all the fonts that you have downloaded onto your computer. So I have got a lot of fonts in my computer. <laughs> so I'm going to use some of the fonts that are mine, but some of the fonts that aren't mine. Okay, but you please feel free to just use the fonts that they already have in PicMonkey. Don't feel like you have to go out and buy the fonts that I am going to be using. Alrighty. Um, but I will link down below where I get my fonts from so you can get a better idea of how I like um, I would sorry, where I like to buy my fonts. So we're going to start off with, I love this font here called Loveline, and this is under my own fonts, um, but there's plenty of fonts, like I said, under ours, so I'll be using a bit of both, and um, yeah, that's the font I wanted to go with, and I'm going to hit Add Text, and there it is, and we're going to say our little and let's click the box. So before I go any further, all I just was click on the font name, hit add text, and I brought up the text box. I then clicked onto the text box and I started typing. And once I'm done, I just reduce that box and I wanted to make it slightly smaller. And I'm just going to drag it up to about there. And on the left, on the right hand side here is your text box. I'm wanting to click onto this black. Um, this, this black rectangle and it's going to bring up my Doppler tool and I'm going to change the color of my font so I am wanting to change it to let's say lip circle okay I now want to add our little mermaid I'm keeping the same font about PicMonkey too is that you can actually change 
change can have a individual color for each of these. So all I'm going to do is click onto this one and I'm going to highlight the first color and I'm going to grab my docking tool and I'm going to change the color. Alright, and then let's go to the next one. I think it's looking pretty cute. So now I'm going to be using I want a banner that says is turning one. Okay, so I'm going to click back onto my overlays and I'm going to hit banners. So banners, remember you probably would have been on the top here and you've just got to scroll all the way down and click onto banners. Okay, and I'm going to go with this one here. And let's enlarge that. Okay, and I'm going to make that color. Now I'm wanting to add some text in there. So I'm going to click onto the text button and I'm going to go into the Pick Monkey font and I'm just going to click onto this one here. So any font that you have used as go to the top of the page. So all of these fonts here I've used in the past. So just remember your latest ones. Okay, is turning one. Alright, so now let's reduce that. Let's bring this up. And I might make it a tad bit smaller. So, yeah, so about there. Now in your text box over here, to make sure that that is being clicked on, so it's highlighted, you click on to effects. And we're going to hit curve. We're going to hit none button and we're going to hit up and then we're going to drag it all the way to the left until we are happy with where it is. Okay and there you have it. So let's go back to options and I am going to change the color to white. And there we go. Super easy. It's a great little tip with um, learning how to to um, arc your arc your font, to curve your font. Sorry. All right. Now let's pick the mission script and hit add text. And we're going to say please join us to celebrate. Okay. Now I want to make that slightly smaller. And I'm thinking a nice grey colour would look quite nice. So I'm just going to click on to that grey there. And I'm actually going to use this fade tool and I'm going to just make it slightly faded so that it kind of matches up. Okay. Now I'm going to start adding my dots. So we're going to go back over to overlays. Click your banner so that it um, pulls your, um, your tab back up. And we're going to go to the top and we're going to find a tab called Lines. And there we have it. And there's all your lines. So we just scroll down and I want these little dots here. And there are my dots. Okay, and I wanted to make those dots slightly smaller, not too small. Perfect. And let's see, drag that back to the top. Alright, let me just see if I'm happy with that. Okay, now and I wanted to change the colour. Okay, let's change the colour. 
I can't come with it because I'm probably even make it a little bit smaller. Okay, and now we're going to add in all our little designs underneath that. Okay, so I began I'm wanting to actually make it very slightly smaller. reason click on to it. All you need to do is go back and we'll let it out again and just click on to the box there and we'll highlight it. For some, for some reason for some it doesn't click on to it. Okay and then let's just yeah, I like that as the font as the font colour. Okay now I want to add a little design at the bottom here but before I do that let's just add in another line go back into our overlays and we're back under line. And then we just click on to that, scroll down and then click on to your line. Now I'm just going to take the line and I'm going to rotate it so that it is straight like that. Obviously, I'm going to erase all of this, but I'll do that later on once I know exactly what's going where. Okay, but then bear in mind too that this little door needs to go in the front too. Okay, which we'll do a little bit later.
from there, all you need to do is to export it. But one thing I forgot to mention to you guys is throughout the whole process, I always save my work because anything could happen to your computer, so it's always good to save your work. So with PicMonkey, they have what's called a hub. And you click on to save. It will bring up a box where you would enter in your name of the file that you want to put under. For some reason, my computer's been slow, so I won't. Okay, and then once you are happy with your design and you don't want to change anything, you can just export it. And by exporting it, it means you're taking it off here and you're popping it onto your computer. So you just need to hit export and pop in your name of your folder. Invitation. Keep it as a JPEG, keep it as PS. Okay, but if this is something you're doing and you're wanting to sell the invitation, um, I would definitely recommend leaving it a PS or even making it Sean. Okay, don't change anything there and you will just export it. Where you export and then save it to wherever it is that you want to save it onto your computer. Okay. You know, if you have any questions, I'm more than happy to help answer any questions you might have. But Pink Monkey is a really good um, software to use, and it is fairly basic once you get to understand which what tools which okay, what tools you use the most. Alright guys, well thank you very much and I look forward to seeing you in the next video. Take care, bye bye.